Well guys, I'm back. Um, been a while since I made a video. Things have been kind of busy around here and hectic and and stuff, so I have been trying to get things uh, done and stuff. So anyway, uh, what I thought I would do, uh, this is still part, we're still dealing with AC and inductors, but um, I thought we'd do something a little different today. We're going to look at a practical uh, situation where uh, some of the stuff I've been talking about will, uh, in theory, will come into play here. Now we're actually going to be jumping ahead a little bit and stuff, but uh, we'll still at least see a practical um, uh, situation where you might uh, run into something that you need to do or possibly do and uh, where you'll need to understand some of the theory. What I got on here is a schematic and I know it's probably kind of small to see and stuff um, of a receiver circuit board. Now I'm not going to go in exactly what this thing goes into uh, mainly because uh, it's for someone else they had asked me uh, a question about doing something um, and so in any case uh, I thought you know I didn't want to take away from them uh, on they will be making videos on this uh, as soon as they get some parts in and, and get started on it so I'm not going to go into what this is but the question was and what we're doing here is we've got it, it's just basically receiver now unlike a radio pure radio receiver where you can vary across a band you know like the AM band the broadcast band like from 550 to 1650 or so or you know short waves or an FM radio or anything like this this has actually three fixed frequencies. There's no um, tuning or anything of that nature in it. But otherwise it's basically the same thing. We have up here a the local oscillator which is a crystal controlled oscillator. It has crystals in it. Uh, we have the antenna circuit, the RF tuning circuit here. We have an RF uh, amp right here and then mixer and then we feed into our IF section here and then it feeds out and you know head out to the audio portion and stuff uh, some of the audio circuits now what the question was this thing is set up uh, from the factory as um, 5, 10 and 15 megahertz and they wanted to have the frequencies in other words instead of 5 be 2.5 instead of uh, 10 B5 instead of uh, I believe it's 15 yeah 15 B10 well the last one won't be quite half so the first question asked me was just simply changing the crystals and that's fine you can do that but you got to rem remember that it's a super heterodyne it's a heterodyne uh, receiver so you can change the crystals up here and get those frequencies but they still have to mix with the RF and antenna circuitry and those would be still set to the 5, 10 and 15 so it wouldn't mix correctly and wouldn't make it through the IF which is set at 455 kilo, kilo cycles <coughs> so instead of just you know it is simple just change the crystals up here to get this local oscillator changed but you also have to change the resident frequencies in these two circuits and that's what we're going to talk about um, so uh, I'll give it show you a blown up a little bit of it with the numbers on there I already worked out and uh, right here basically what that is is uh, what I did is had my printer uh, basically split it in half so you're seeing this portion this way kind of blown up a little bit bigger so 
in a nutshell what we're going to do we have the coils here in the RF and the transformers here which is coils uh, in the antenna circuit we're going to change the capacitors in these ser series resonant circuits here we're actually going to have to add uh, capacitance in uh, to get the frequency we need. Here we have to just change them to get the different uh, different fixed frequencies that we need there. And after that there will have to be an alignment done because for one thing right off the bat I cannot get exactly what I need for this as far as size of capacitance. Uh, capacitance have set uh, values that you can buy, standards and some of these needed to be somewhere in between those a little bit but just fine they have trimmers C314, 316 and 318 are trimmers that run from about 10 to 60 picofarads uh, there's a trimmer here, trimmer here and trimmer here 2.7 to 20 picofarad trimmers so uh, I attempted to pick capacitances that would fit uh, into those circuits and still be able to be trimmed and aligned to get things perfect. Now there is one other caveat about this that's going to be just a tad bit off and I'll talk about that a little bit further. The two and a half megahertz, what was five megahertz, the two and a half megahertz, the crystal needed for that is not exact, uh, the exact value is not available but it comes in close you can get one that is really close and what ends up happening is with making some adjustments to what I need to do with the front end and mixing that it will be basically uh, off peak of 455 it will be running close to around 450 actually about 451 uh, instead of 455 which is fine the band pass on the IFs should be wide enough to easily pass that without any problems at all and will not cause any any noticeable effects but you know that's sometimes the problems you run into when you're doing modifications you may not get exactly what you're looking for and the local oscillator as a standard crystal oscillator generally does not have any means of actual adjustment but it's going to be well within the bandpass, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, so before I get into this, it requires math. Okay, so <coughs> before I get into this, I want to talk about the math that, that we need uh, and where it comes from. So, um, I think... Yeah, let's bring this out a little bit. Focus. It's being stubborn. I want to turn the light on here. Maybe that's one of its problems. Hopefully that's not going to glare. It don't look like it. All right. The um, formula is F equals 1 over 2 pi square root of L and C. Now, uh, F is frequency, it would be our resonant frequency, um, and uh, 2 pi is just constant, that the L and C is both the uh, inductor and, or coil and the capacitor. And, and this works for either what is known as series resonance or parallel resonance. Parallel where you got what is a tank circuit where you've got an inductor and a capacitor in parallel with each other series is resonance is where you got an inductor and a capacitor in series same formula for both but let's I want to really do an exercise in to help you understand where this came from so we're going to draw a little graph here um, don't get too concerned about it being a graph uh, over here is X for reactants, like inductive and capacity reactants. 
and down here is frequency. Now, when I look at capacitive reactants on a graph like this, it follows a curve, something like this. And it's called a natural log curve. Inductive reactants, on the other hand, is what they know what is known as linear, a straight line. So it follows a straight line and if you're not old and shaky and everything it would be a straight line. Now, the reason why I drew this, this here is X sub C and this here is X sub L. So this curve represents X sub C as it changes with frequency. As I increase in frequency, the uh, capacitive reactance reduces. As, as I decrease in frequency, the capacitive reactance goes up. Inductive reactance has the opposite effect. As I increase in frequency, inductive reactance goes up. And as I um, reduce frequency, inductive reactance goes down. So, but there is one interesting point on here. When I want my resonant frequency, this frequency here, it is actually at this point. That is where, if I had that capacitor and that inductor in circuit, whether it's series resonance or parallel, it doesn't matter that is where it would be resonant at. That would be the frequency. It's where the two actually meet. It matters not that they have some uh, reactants, you know. And I have no idea because I don't have no values here. I have no idea what that reactance will be uh, in ohms. But that doesn't matter. And we'll, I'll go into this a lot deeper later in, this, in the series on um, AC. But the point I want to make out is when capacity reactants equals inductive reactants, we have resonance frequency. So how does that work? I want to show how we get that formula from these two guys. So with that in mind, we're going to go through a little exercise here and uh, show you how we get that. You don't have to memorize this or anything else. This is just, just a little exercise. So, I want X sub L to equal X sub C. That will be my resonant frequency. So what's X sub L? Well, X sub L is 2 pi frequency times inductance. That's going to equal, at resonance, x sub c. What's it? Well, it's 1 over 2 pi frequency times capacitance. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for frequency. So, we're going to do some algebra. And I'll kind of go, th I'll redo this later in, in our video. Uh, even Probably even somewhat dedicated to it, but... Uh, so we'll kind of go through this quickly. But in algebra, when you want to find for a particular value, then you must get that value by itself on one side of the equation, the equal sign, and everything else on the other side, such as it is right here. So, let's look at this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by F. And I'll do that in a different color so it shows up. Hopefully it will. So I'm going to take F times both sides. Now, why am I doing that? Well, over here, F is on top of the fraction. When I do that, 
These two cancel. F over F equals 1. Doesn't matter what value it is, it just equals 1. I mean, if I said that this was 10 hertz or 10 megahertz or 10 gigahertz, it don't matter. Um, when you take 10 gigahertz over 10 gigahertz, it equals 1. So, what that does is these cancel out. And these two multiply together. So now I got 2 pi f squared l equals 1 over 2 pi c. Now we're going to jump a little bit here. Because now I want to get rid of these guys over here. Because I want this f squared by itself. So in this case, instead of multiplying like I did up here, I can divide by 2 pi L. And I will do the same thing here. I'll draw a line here. 2 <coughs> pi L. The line just is a fraction showing that I'm dividing. Now, over here, 2 cancels, pi cancels, L cancels. What we end up over here. So on this side we're going to end up F squared. On this side we're going to have 1. And if you remember your math from way back in school, when you divide by a whole number to a fraction. In other words, you take a fraction and divide it by a whole number. In other words, Two, like the 2 pi L here, you flip and multiply. You can think of this as being like over 1. You just flip that and then multiply. So when I do that, then the 2 pi times, well, times this 2 pi, so I end up with 4 pi squared. I have L and then C. Okay, good so far. Kind of starting to look like this one up here. One last little thing. I don't want just F squared. I want it just by itself. So what I do is, and again I'll use a different color here. Well, we'll draw it out first. We'll have F squared and we'll have 1 over my 4 pi squared. L C. I square root both sides. I can do that. Same way as multiplying by something on each side, the equation stays the same. I can do square roots to both sides, it stays the same. Well, This side, we can make use of a simple principle in math, and that is with square roots. This actually equals, can equal, square root of 1 over the square root of 4 pi squared times, I'll put a dot, the square root of L C. All I did was I just kind of split them up a little bit. Since these are multiplied together, I can break up the square root any way I want. This is the same thing as this. This is the same thing as here. The whole thing is the same thing as this. So, when I take the square root of any number squared, it's just that number. The two cancel out. So here I have just f. On this side, square root of 1 is just 1. Down below, the square root of 4 pi squared. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of pi squared, again, the square root of any number squared is just that number. So I have pi. Now, I don't have anything squared in here, so I just got to leave it the way it is. 
times the square root of LC. And that is that. Resonant frequency. So, now, I use that resonant frequency. Let's just go ahead and kind of draw it down here a little closer. Um, to find out what I needed in this circuit for these here. First I looked at these and um, I figured out what the the different frequencies are going to be. I looked it up um, basically you know this this was 15 megahertz we're switching it to 10 this was 10 we switch it to 5 and this was 5 and we basically have it to about two and a half so there's three trimmers we're not changing those but there were three fixed caps in here that fit with these inductors or coils to make a series residence following this formula we had to change those. That's what I was going to have to figure out. Each, they were all the same size because the coils are different sizes. And the coils work out, um, I believe, the, this one here, the lowest frequency is a 15.5 microhenry. This one here is a 4.7 microhenry coil. And this one here is 1.8 microhenry. So I use those numbers, uh, this all had 36 picofarad caps in here, the same size. I use the information here and the frequency I was looking for and I rearranged this formula to solve for C. Now I won't do that right now, but in a later video we'll talk about how to do that. But it's not any more different than what I did to start with, uh, taking the initial two formulas and bringing out to solve for F. You just rearrange it and solve for C. So I rearranged the formula to solve for C and plug the numbers in. All I had to do is plug in frequency and plug in inductance and do the math. And I came up with uh, my different values here. Uh, C. This one ended up going to be a 250 picofarad, this one here a 200 picofarad, and this one 130 picofarad. So that took care of this circuit. Now again, like I said, these are not exact values of what the math showed. You can't get them, but it is within the realm of the trimmers to be able to align it, to adjust these to get these right on, pretty much should be on the money. Now over here, all they had was just trimmers. So I had to add in capacitance to get the uh, frequency we needed. So again, we, let's see, the first one here, up here would be 120 picofarad, 200 picofarad, and 270 picofarad. And that would get the frequencies needed here within the tuning range. They're not, again, not exact values because you can't get exact values, but the trimmers have enough room to adjust. So, let's talk about adjustment here. How do you do alignment on this? Well, right off the bat, the first thing, all we're changing is this front end frequencies. We're changing the local oscillator, the RF and the antenna. So IF alignment should be good to go. Shouldn't have to bother with it. Unless someone's messed with it, it should be all right. So you do it like you would do anything, any radio. Uh, this actually has no instructions for it because this board um, was a factory assembled and set to where it's at so they the factory decided that they you didn't need to make any adjustments to it 
I will tell you this is out of Heath Kit, okay? But it goes in something much bigger. So, simple. We know, the, the, the nice thing about this, we actually have fixed frequency, so we know what we're looking for. So, we need to put up something down this end, you know, a meter or something, to be able to tell when we peak. We feed a signal in here at the antenna. And we'll make use of the frequencies that we're looking for. Two and a half megahertz, five megahertz, and ten megahertz. We adjust the individual tremors for each individual frequency. So down here, this is a 13 microhenry, down here is the first circuit that we're looking at. So we would probably, you know, we put in uh, our two and a half megahertz in here have our meter connected up and you know set 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 our signal generator to that frequency and then tweak this one and the two and a half here also and actually it'd probably be best to tweak this one first and then this one because you always go from the meter back so tweak this one and then this one until you get that, you know, the greatest deflection on the meter, just like any other alignment. Do the same thing for the 5 megahertz adjustments, and the same thing for the 10 megahertz adjustments. And then double check it, go back to your 5, but this time you can actually feed that signal uh, either into this um, base here or into individually into each one of these at these points to just kind of check these and come back and then check these but they should be pretty close now that's really all there is to it just the, the initial setup would be to put a you know feed into the antenna use some sort of dummy antenna uh, um, with these frequencies probably about a hundred picofarad or or something of that nature capacitor and then um, connect your meter in here um, to measure uh, the output and it you know it's going to be um, you know you'll, you'll measure just a, a an RF out here so you just set the meter to AC or even DC and you should be able to pick it up it's after the detector here so we can put it on AC and have the have the signal generator set with a tone modulated and you should pick that up now we was going to talk about that one frequency that's just a hair off because you can't get the exact crystal and, and about the IF when you look at an IF response, again we're going to graph. So we've got a graph here, like this. And the typical IF response will come in here pretty low and then slowly go up pretty steep and then pitch over and come back down. This point right here. Should be if you know when it's adjusted right. This will be the uh, F sub R resonant frequency. The bandpass of any IF is a point about right here. This is known as the 3 dB down or RMS about. 70.7 percent from the bottom up of signal. That distance, that point there, which comes down here and comes down here, this distance here is the bandpass. <coughs> For 455 kilohertz IF, generally the bandpass is around about Oh, somewhere in the vicinity of about 
15 to 20 kilocycles um, as standard. Uh, that allows what what is known as the side bands to get through the IF so that you have good fidelity if it's on a, a radio receiver. So, and I have I mean, I've looked at these IFs and I don't really see any reason why they wouldn't be pretty much the same. So, the band pass will be plenty wide enough. That five being about a l- little less than five kilohertz off is going to be up in here. And a point up in this this area here, so it's just a hair off from peak. It's not going to be noticeable. It will send through. There will not be much uh, difference in signal strength through the IF section, so it should be fine. So anyway, like any of my videos, I yak and talk and gab and everything a little too long, but. I wanted to show this and uh, there will be videos on this thing when he gets the parts in so um, uh, they'll be up. It's on Ar- it's Arthur Hollingsworth. It's who this thing belongs to and uh, he will be uh, It'll probably be on his new channel if you guys haven't uh, uh, the Beginner's Radio Workshop or Workbench, I believe is the name of it. Anyway, that'll probably be where you'll see this. It won't be on his other channel. So, but look forward to it coming up, and then you'll know what it is. He'll explain what it is and everything, and he'll uh, go through this. And hopefully, it works all right for him. With anything like this. Uh, you're still limited to the the components you put in, how tight tolerance they are, and everything else, and then the, and that everything will work all right once you get them put in. Uh, electronics, like any other engineering or any other technology, uh, what shows up in the math is just a lot of times just a ballpark, and sometimes things don't always work out perfectly in reality. So you may there's always the chance that adjustments may have to be made. But it should be uh, close enough for it to work. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, this will be part of inductors. Uh, so it will be part two. Part three, we'll get into continuing on more with the um, talking about series and uh, inductors, putting them in series, putting them in parallel, and so forth and so on, and things like that. And, uh, and moving on. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you um, have not subscribed and you enjoy uh, theory and watching videos on theory, uh, mostly it's usually tube theory. I know this is a solid state unit. Uh, but uh, most of the time I do just tube theory. So if you're interested in stuff like that, as well as I do, um, I got videos and I will be continuing doing videos on actually restoring uh, stuff. So uh, if you like those kind of videos and you have not subscribed, please subscribe and then you'll um, know when I put up a new video. So again, guys, thanks for watching and, uh, and uh, look forward to the next video and you all have a good day. Uh, a day today and, and the rest of the week. Thanks again for watching.